topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to the Camping Show. I'm C.W. Getz. And I'm Bianca Cahill. Good evening. It is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. We have an 84 degree Fahrenheit sunny day here in North Central Illinois. We kind of have another heat wave going on, don't we? It's coming. I hear it. Yes. 100 plus degrees, man. The dog days. The dog days of summer. That's right. That's right. That's like August. (laughs) It's supposed to be that, right? I think so. Late July into August. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I and I never understood really why they called it the dog days because dogs certainly don't enjoy that. I I, I can't imagine they would. I don't think anybody enjoys it. <laughs> it's it's also- really hot, but also at the same time, summer's over, and it's just another reminder that you know all the fun's going. Another sun, another fun summer's behind us, right? I tell Absolutely. you who does. I tell you who loves it is river people because we can jump in the water at any given moment. And cool ourselves off. No matter how yucky the water looks, doesn't matter. As long as I, and I'm thinking about going on to the Vermilion River this weekend. So there's going to be some rain in Pontiac, Illinois. So that is south. But, you know, the R- Vermilion runs south to north. Correct. Um, right. So then if you get significant rain in Pontiac, that's usually the telltale. So then the water will be up, let's say, in our area, which is about, I, w- I don't know, 30 30 miles north if I stand corrected. <laughs> I think you're right. Well, and it's one of the two it's one of the two rivers that run in Illinois that run northerly, that flow northerly. Yes. Yes, and the I Nile don't... River does that. What which one's the other one? The Nile River. Oh no, in That's Illinois. That's the only other river. I thought there was two in Illinois. Maybe oh, there is two in uh, Vermilion River oh, and I'm talking about the Nile River. Yeah, right, right. Now right. that one's in Egypt. Yeah, that's not in Illinois. I, no, but no, I no. Know there were two. <laughs> hey, Maya Marzaki, you can come to Brazil, enjoy the sunny days. Absolutely. Hey, I have to tell you, uh, my Brazil trip was amazing. I can't imagine. The food. You look like I, you got some color. Well, I, got, I probably got some color mowing my lawn the other day, but I, <laughs> but we, I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time in the sun. We, there was just bam, bam, bam. And the, the, the climbers down there were phenomenal. They were so helpful, it was very cooperative. Some of the nicest people I've ever met yeah. in, from Brazil. I mean, they were Absolutely. just wonderful. the food. I did not know food could taste that good. And that's the truth. Um, but yeah, it was just just a wonderful experience. Actually, I was just telling Juan, our producer, um, on the way back, when I got off the plane in Chicago, I got yelled at by a uh, immigration officer because oh, no. I wasn't standing on the red line. I said, welcome to America, pal. Yeah, really. Yeah, no it's, kidding. It's nice people. Yes. It's Chicago. Arrest me now. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So anyway, and thank you, Maya and and yes. uh, Fabio, her, her boyfriend, Fabio, they're just wonderful hosts for that whole event. So I really did appreciate it. Yes, it looked like you had a lovely time. Yes, very much so. Right back at you, Maya. All right. Well, tonight's episode of The Camping Show is brought to you by Campground Views, making camping easier. And Rutabaga Paddle Sports, providing time on the water. Tonight's episode is selecting the right crew for a wilderness trip. With our special guest, Cliff Jacobson. Could you tell us a little bit about Cliff, please, Bianca? Absolutely. Cliff Jacobson is one of North America's most respected outdoor writers and wilderness paddlers. He is a retired environmental science teacher, an outdoor skills instructor, a canoeing and camping consultant, and the author of more than a dozen top-selling books and a popular video on canoeing and camping. Cliff is a distinguished Eagle Scout and also a recipient of the American Canoe Association's prestigious Legends of Paddling Award and a member of the ACA Hall of Fame. With that, welcome to the show, Cliff. Hey, man, it's good to be back. I there haven't uh, been with you guys for, for some time. And it's so, nice hey, to meet you. Cool. Virtually. Thanks for having me back. Well, you, you, were, you do remember me then, right? I mean, remember who I am, right? Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got to reintroduce I, myself. I do remember. Hey, you know, isn't Bianca's voice? I don't voice... remember Bianca though. 
isn't isn't her voice the coolest man she doesn't because i said something about i love the raspy voice but what, goes, who, who is the is it shaka khan that yeah. sings that song <sighs> I can't, I'm not even going to. Oh, yeah. And then tell me you something know? good. Yeah. Dude, I don't know if you're cheering for the Dallas wow. Cowboys cheerleaders now or what, but it's awesome. It's working for you. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, well, Cliff, let me ask you, what do we need yeah. to know? Just to, right off the bat, to start, what do we need to know about selecting a crew for wilderness trips? You just grab your buddies, right? Well, yeah, before we going? talk about yeah, yeah, I know. But before we talk about that, you know, I, I got to tell you, when CW asked me, he says, let's uh, let's do a show on, on and how you pick a crew for a wilderness trip. I just sort of rolled my eyes and I said, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you know, we can cover that in about five minutes. Are you sure you really want to do this? But, you know, the more I got into it, the more I realized that uh, it's a pretty important thing. And um, there's it's an important because, you know, you're going to be spending a lot of time with these people. Um, you're going to be spending all day with them, sometimes half the night or all night with them. You're going to be with them when the bugs are bite, biting fiercely. You might encounter bears. You're going to be with them then. You're going to be with them if they capsize, if they're on a canoe trip like what I do. I'm a canoeist. If they capsize a canoe, you're going to be with them. You're going to be pulling them out of the water or they're going to be pulling somebody else out of the water. And I'll tell you, one of the things you're going to find out, you're going to find out real, real fast where there are people you want to be with. And this is not like going to work with somebody. I mean, I've had colleagues that I've worked with for years and I had one colleague that I worked with for probably 10 years, thought he was an absolutely great guy. Well, he, he you know, he is, he was a great guy. Yes. But I got him on a wilderness trip and he was a disaster. He complained all the time. Uh, I thought he was a decent paddler. He had a couple of canoes and so forth. And they were good canoes. They weren't junkers. He talked about canoeing and camping. He said he did it. He loved it. And he was a, he was a disaster on a trip. Now, wow. the, the ugly head of this surfaces so often that you wind up at least in my experience, with what I call the one in 10 rule. And the one in 10 rules rule is, seems like no matter how hard you try, one in every 10 people in your crew is going to be a jerk. Um, uh, I, I have lots of stories. And so, but before I start telling you the stories, I, um, I want to share a couple top shelf or interest, interesting uh, tales with you. Um, yeah. The first one I want to tell you about is I had a friend of mine, of, uh, and he was a re retired, he's a retired doctor. He was CEO of a lineup. And we've done a lot of trips together. We've done major Arctic trips together. And um, Tom uh, was in the process of hiring a new doctor and he had been talking to this new doctor. He was a young guy. He was like in his in his 20s. And um, the guy said that he had signed up uh, uh, for a canoe trip with me. I was leading canoe trips in, in northern Canada uh, for the Science Museum, Minnesota. And so Tom called me on the phone. He says, you know, he says, uh, I'm not going to hire this new guy till you tell me how he did. He says, you take him on that trip. And when he comes back, if he did great, he's hired. If he didn't do great, he's not hired. <clears throat> so, okay, we went on a trip, and it turned out the guy was really great. He was one of the first guys to get up in the morning, start a fire. It would, if it would be raining, it'd be miserable, it'd be cold. He never complained. He's <laughs> always had a smile on his face. And so when we got back, I uh, told, called Doc and I said, "You Doc, I said I did a canoe trip, you know." He, hey, he's hired. All right. So <laughs> about uh, three or four months later, Tom calls me on the phone. He says, "He says that's the best doc, best new Doc I've ever hired." He says, "I should send them all on canoe trips with you. Pay your finders <laughs> fee." Like, I said, I'll take the piners. 
but I mean, that sort of kind of drives the point home. How these people perform in the wilderness is a whole different ball game and the way they perform on the job. On the job, yeah. you're there for eight hours a day. Uh, sometimes you can even hide a little bit during the day, but when five o'clock rolls around or whatever, you're out of there, you go home and you do you do what you want to do. So yep. um, trying to figure out what these people are going to be like is uneasy. Um, you can look at their history. You can say, I've known them for years and years, but Let me ask it's you this, not Cliff. easy. Yeah, because, you know, I, mm -hmm. I would think, and I've done this before, I've like, hey, buddies, let's go on a trip together. There's, you know, six mm -hmm. is always a good number. And and you get your buddies there and you find out that uh, after the trip, maybe you're not all buddies anymore. Mm -hmm. And and no, when you, right. and Cliff, you said, you said, that, okay, the guy had all these canoes. He had this, he had that. He talked to, he talked really good about, how do you, I mean, what do you do? Do you, do you risk insulting someone and said, hey, let's go paddling before. I just want to see how you perform it. Or, but how do you know? any of this stuff beforehand well okay unless you really right. realistic realistic yeah okay so realistically if you're say you want to do a, a wilderness trip say you want to do a canoe trip in canada okay if you're going to do that you're probably going to have a minimum of six people in fact if you're going to do a high adventure trip probably almost anywhere that requires an airplane you're probably going to wind up with about six people or maybe yeah. more why because you got airplane so six people is pretty pretty is getting down a four is minimal but when you get to six now you're starting to get to the point where you're paying for the airplane you're paying uh, paying your expenses and and you know whatever making a little money for yourself if you, if, if you want to do that right <clears throat> so but one of the things that i always did is the first because i didn't know any of these people you know, and I would say whether you know these people or you don't know these people probably isn't going to make a lot of difference unless you spent a lot already spend a lot of time in the wilderness with them. I mean, if you've been on right. uh, uh, three or four day week long backpacking trips with somebody, you know what he's like. But if you don't, and you're just trying to put a crew together. You're going to have to use some techniques to uh, you talk about that in a second. Yeah, very good. You still yeah. want this call? <laughs> okay, because I thought you froze right, there for a second. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, well, all right. Let's ahead, talk Bianca. about this. What I would do is I would call people on the phone first, and I call them and I have a nice long talk with them, and you tell them I tell them a little bit about the adventure. This is what you, you know, um, you know, do you feel like you can do this? And I also send them out a questionnaire. Now, here's the deal on the questionnaire. Don't take it too seriously. You might ask questions if you're canoeing. You might ask questions like, um, have you ever paddled rapids? Um, can you do an eddy turn? Can you do a peel out? Okay. Uh, do you know what, uh, can you do a high brace or a low brace? And if they just come back with question marks, okay, you know that person doesn't know anything. But don't weed them out yet because that's not the distinguishing factor. Well, people say to me, you know, <clears throat> Cliff, you know, what's the most important thing when picking a crew? They think I'm going to say something like, well, you got to be a good paddler. You got to be big and powerful <clears throat> so you can carry the, <laughs> all those heavy packs and canoes. No, no, no. Right. You got to, number one, you got to be a nice person. Yeah. I don't yeah. care if you're yeah. a big person or a little tiny person or even a little tiny, tiny person like me. you got to be a nice person. Why? Because you're going to be spending a lot of time with these people. And I'm going to tell you, talk to anybody that's been on any serious wilderness trip with other people. And they're going to tell you the quickest way to ruin a trip or the major factor in ruining a trip are people. People who won't cooperate. People yeah. who complain people who are jerks. The point is you can take somebody who doesn't know how to canoe a stroke and you can train them as you go and they'll learn and they'll be fine. But there's nothing that you can do to turn a jerk into a nice guy. And I believe <laughs> me, I've had true. a lot of jerks on my trips. Okay. 
Oh, that's um, true. Yeah. I can. I, yeah. I, 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 I got to tell you this story before you go, go and break it. Give me an example. Okay. <clears throat> so we're, we're doing this strip on the, um, um, the Steel River in Ontario. Um, it's not what I call a real tough river, but hey, it's not a piece of cake either. And so I talked to these people on the phone, and one of the people I talked to was a woman. Her name was Margaret. I'll never forget this. And I said to her, I said, you know, Margaret, he said, I said, if it's okay, I had had her, uh, um, her questionnaire in hand, and she said she'd done a little canoeing, but very much, but that was no problem. So I said to her, I want to pair you with Shelly. I said, Shelly is the only other woman on this trip. I said, she's been on a number of trips with me. I mean, she is a really good whitewater paddler, okay? Mm -hmm. A really nice person. So there was this long pause on the phone. And then all of a sudden, what came back was, quote, well, we'll have to see about this. I wasn't consulted in this decision. Okay. (laughs) Right then I knew I have a problem. And the problem began the very first day. Wow. First day of the trip. Okay. I've got these expensive tents. These are, were Cannondale Aristic tents. They're made by Cannondale Bicycle Company. Many, many years ago, they're still best tent. They're phenomenal tents. Yeah. But they were old now and they were no longer in production. So I gave everybody on how to pack the poles of this. The poles were too long to fit in the tent. So I gave them a lesson on how I wanted these poles packed. I said, don't just stick them underneath the pack flap because if you do and you capsize, zingo, they're gone. And the pole set, Ooh. and this was. 25 years ago, pole sets, a, a pole set was $150. Okay. I made this yeah. very clear. No, Margaret won't do that. She just sticks them under the pack. So um, she's ma- I'm really getting mad about this. I said, I'm not going <laughs> to be, you have to be really nice. You're a chip leader, you know, uh, Margaret, right? I, said, I can't have this. No, I, I've asked you to please do this because if you capsize, I'm going to lose this. Well, I, I, we're, I, we're not going to capsize. I mean, I don't know what to do at this point. You know, anything I can yeah. do. I guess if you capsize, you're going to lose the poles. The tent won't set up. You're going to sleep out there with the bugs, and I'm going to send you a bill for 150 bucks. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I so would do the very, same. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, yeah. So then this oh is my. like the first day of the trip, okay? And whenever we would oh come to a rapid, you know, I would have everybody walk the rapids with me, and we would all look at the rapids. And I would choreograph the moves. I would say, this is what you have to do. Do you feel you can do this? No, if you can't do this, no problem. Leave your boat there. We'll run it through. I'll come back. And me and another person will, will take it through. So this is what. So we go through the whole thing. And I'm looking, as we're looking around. Margaret's not in the group. She's not there. Where, where is she? Go? Well, she's still sitting back at the canoe in the top of the rapid. So we go back up there. She says, Margaret. Don't you want, you're going to run these rapids. Don't you want to look at them with the rest of the group? Well, no. I I mean, why should I? You've already made a decision what we're going to do. So I don't feel like. (laughs) So this is how it started. And it continued like this the whole trip until ultimately it hit ahead about the fifth day of the trip. We were mm-hmm. having lunch <sighs> above a rapid. There was a little pond there where the this, this pond like just went 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 it went right into the rapid. So we're in this sort of a sort of a pond type thing, and we're just having lunch. And all of a sudden, Margaret's canoe drifts drifts out <laughs> uh, drifts out, out from shore. And oh wow, Shelley goes ballistic she says i told you oh that was another rule you always tie the canoe up on shore 
Okay. Absolutely. Now, we made a big deal of this because the news can drift out. Shelly goes ballistic. How many times have I told you, Margaret, that that to tie the canoe up? So Shelly jumps in the water and swims over to the canoe before it can go through the end of the pond down into the rapid, brings it back. <laughs> so at this point now, she is a complete, um, she's out of the group. I mean, at this point on now, as soon as we pitch camp, she leaves camp and goes and sits on a rock somewhere. When, wow. uh, when I make dinner and call for dinner, she comes in, gets her food, and goes and sits on a rock. So wow. she basically, she would have totally spoiled the trip if the rest of the crew hadn't been so wonderful. So but yeah. that's what happens when you get a jerk on a trip. Wow. And it, and it can spoil the entire trip because it's just a bad vibe than the whole rest of the trip. And I mean, there's... <sighs> It's so hard to change a vibe when you get to that point. When somebody gets to that point and they have that attitude, it's kind of hard to turn it around. And it almost seems like they get more frustrated the longer they're out there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, my God. That's oh, oh, you know, you know absolutely. One more stories. Huh? Yeah. Actually, you know First, what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do the commercial break. Yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, let's call a commercial break. More yeah. stories with Cliff commercial Jacobson break. on the Capping Show. All Stay right, tuned right. on Talk 4 TV right. and WC 4 White Radio. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Introducing Campground View's virtual tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. A few years ago, someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, well, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddleboards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. Back with our guest, Cliff Jacobson, here on The Camping Show. Bianca, I messed up my little question thing here, so I believe uh, the next question is yours, but Cliff had a little story to share with Yes, you. yes. Let's get to that story before you forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was watching that uh, commercial. Big, I love that. So it's a wonderful store. Yeah. You know how such yeah, a yeah. high-end camping and canoeing store got named after a vegetable. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You know, I think I think Darren told us the story, but I can't remember what it was. I'm gonna have to. Ask he him. must just really oh. like Rutabagas. <laughs> Actually, he really he, must. He took it over, but I don't know. So I like I, Yeah, I don't you know, know, you think was. about the North Face, Patagonia, yeah, yeah. Rutabaga, Rutabaga. <laughs> had Rutabaga. to be a farmer. That, had to be a farmer. What? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Well, so hey, quick. I gotta tell you about. You remember I told you yeah. about. I told you about this guy. This he he was a friend of mine. I told you we taught for for like ten years together, and he on this trip, and he turned out to be kind of a yeah. disaster. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this this is kind of an interesting story because it shows uh, it it just shows the difference between two two approaches to the same thing. Mm -hmm. We did a river called the Snake. It's in the Yukon. This is not the Snake River in, in the Western United States. This is in the Yukon. And it, par it sort of parallels the South Nahani River, okay? 
uh, the snake is called the Little Nahani. Well, the year we did the snake, it was super high water. There was actually uh, some some serious problems on that river with with other canoeists. And so we're on this river and we're way up in the mountains and it's, it's really cold. It's, it's right near 32 degrees, right near, oh, right wow. near freezing. And we've been running rapids all day and we are not making very good time because these are big rapids. They are dangerous rapids and the water is very cold. And we have a lot of people who aren't, aren't that experienced. And so I'm looking down river, and as far as I can see now, it's rapid after rapid after rapid. And the temperature is in about <clears throat> 35 degrees. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. I got to think on this. So the following morning, we wake up, up and it's snowing pretty good, too. <laughs> and so I get up, and we got uh, there's a fire going, and everybody is sort of huddled. Everybody's warm, fine. We're having breakfast and so forth. And this one guy, he goes, he goes ballistic. We're gonna, we're gonna die here. Uh, how are we gonna get out? We can't run those rapids. It's freezing. It's snowing. Cliff, get the satellite phone out. Call for a helicopter. Yeah, call for a helicopter. It's a good. <laughs> oh yeah, getting this whole crew out by helicopter. That'll probably cost mm, fifty thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah, I was just gonna say. That? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's just going crazy like this. This we're going to die. We, we can't go on. We can't go on. <clears throat> and everybody's getting freaked. And just about then, my wife, Susie, exits the tent. She just gets out of the tent in the morning and she looks around, big smile on her face. And she goes, It's snowing. <laughs> hey, you guys, it's snowing. And she grabs snowballs and she starts throwing at people. Oh, wow. and it just totally <laughs> breaks the atmosphere. Wow. And so yeah. those are the two contrasts that yeah. you can get when you and so the the other thing is is you know it's it does I want to say again it doesn't matter the size of the person or the sex of the person. In fact I remember one young woman I had on an Arctic canoe trip and we came in oh well we didn't finish the trip we had to cross this big lake but we got we got uh, we got stopped by bad really bad weather you know it, it's raining bloody murder it's blowing 20 uh, probably 20 to 30 miles an hour and on I and it's like close to midnight you know it stays pretty light you're north of the Arctic Circle and it's close to midnight and I can't even function anymore. And I get in my tent, I haven't eaten, nobody's eaten. And I know I gotta get, I gotta get up and make some food, but I just can't. I'm just completely shot. And just about then this young woman with a smiley face comes around with a bunch of bars and, you know, bars, you know, not you know, candy bars, bars, stuff like that. And starts giving it, delivering it to everybody in the tents. Now that is a hero. She was a hero, okay, because she could do it. So, you know, yeah. don't talk to me about you got to have a big person or they got to be strong and powerful. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's it, po it, the, the, the yes. power is, is, in, is in here. Yes. That's where it is. The power is in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a mental thing, you know, it's exactly, it's, it's the willpower, you know, it's all in your head. You know, you can, you can choose to have a good attitude despite the elements. Um, you can choose to be positive, you know, and um, sometimes people don't have that willpower. Sometimes people let, um, let the elements, the situations, their emotions drive them. And like you said earlier, that can spoil a trip. You know, Cliff, you, yeah. I, I think with That's, your yeah. wife, like yeah. Susie, coming out of the tent and saying things like, hey, it's snowing. I, I can imagine. Yeah. I can understand yeah. why you would fall in love with a woman like that. In oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so oh, she radiates like, positivity. You know, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you know uh, kind of on the heels of that, um, I had, uh, this is a different trip that I had. I had two men, both, both of which were um, diabetics. Okay. Um, one of them um, had an insulin pump 
The oh, other boy. one had an attitude. <laughs> and it went like this. Uh, okay, I have to eat at precisely 12 o'clock. I have to eat precisely at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock or whatever it was. I don't remember. But so we're going down a river, <clears throat> and we're in the middle of a rapid or whatever. And Oh, I have to eat. I have to eat. And I, I'm really getting mad about this because, you know, if that's what you have to do, pull a bar or whatever out of your Absolutely. pack and eat. Okay? Absolutely. Figure it out. Yep. And so what happened was the guy with the insulin pump, it was never a problem. He had it under control. He had it figured out. He was one of the favorite guys on the whole crew. The other guy, well, we sort of tolerated him. But you yeah. know what? He would never be invited back for, uh, oh, for another trip. Not. So it's even little teeny things like this, you know, little things. Yeah. Like you this. know, some people um, can be so particular. And you, you wouldn't find that out until you're staying with them for a couple of days and, and whatnot. And so, you know, I feel like also the more people you can have on the trip, the more chances are for uh, meshing of personalities. And and I wanted to ask you, has there been any like big personality um, meshes? Have there, have there been any arguments between people, any fights? What have you seen? Just say it, Bianca. Fist fights. Oh, just, just, has there been anybody fist yeah. fights? Any, any fist yeah. fights? Anybody throwing anybody yeah. in the water? You know, yeah. pushing them down a rabbit? Yeah. Any blood? Yeah. Any, any planting of spiders uh, in know, the tent? I have, I, I have, I have, yeah, I have a couple stories. One is kind of a rodeo eye story, <laughs> and the other is I can't believe this really happened. Oh, I like that can't one. Believe Sounds good already. <laughs> um, I can't believe it happened. This was on the Pipestone River in Ontario, okay? We had one guy along who was a public defender. Oh, wow. Uh, he wow. was very proud of that because he always wore a shirt that said public defender. Oh, boy. And he was just a little bit weird. Um, just a little. <laughs> he just did not have good social skills. And so, you know, and so like we would eat, he would always not, he would always try to away from the group like a little bit and everybody was trying to be friendly and everything and this was about the i don't know maybe the yeah the trip i can't believe this all of a sudden his tent mate comes up to me and he's and um he's pulling the ground cloth out of the tent now we have a plastic ground cloth every tent does and it goes inside the tent and it mm -hmm. rolls up the walls of the tent about mm -hmm. a foot that's mm -hmm. to, for does two things. One, if any water gets in the tent, if it rains a lot, and a lot of times water can get into a tent if it rains a lot. I don't care how good a tent you have. Yeah, yeah. But if you had that ground cloth on the inside, the water's trapped between the ground cloth and the floor. And that works, too. Um, so here is his partner pulling the ground cloth out. And I said, oh, what's going on? He says, you're not going to believe this. Um, that, I won't, I'll, we'll call him John, okay? <laughs> John. John <laughs> defecated in the John tent. Smith. Wait, I what? Said, what? He, he, I said, what? He said, yeah, he defecated in the tent. Why did he so do that? He's taken this flat. He defecated in the tent. Okay? Why did he do that, so Cliff? The, he, well, I, his partner has taken this ground cloth out down to the river to try to clean it, clean it off. And <laughs> so I said, did, did you say anything to him? Did you talk to him uh, or, 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 or anything like that? And he said, yeah. I said, why would you do it? And he says, well, it was just it's kind of cold out. It was just too <gasps> cold out. Wow. Oh. What can I? What can I say? Um, I, I have one that's. Jeez. <laughs> you know, oh, there's an old well, saying about, about defecating where you where you live or something like that. Yeah, don't don't poop where you sleep, man, or whatever. Yeah, that's there's true. there's an old saying. That's right. And that's I, and right. I, even I think my your dog knows. I don't it, even right? think they mean literally. <laughs> I think that was just supposed to be metaphorically, and you have to use oh, that literally with some people, apparently. <laughs> Did you hear what Cliff said? Even oh. your dog knows better than that. Man. Oh heck, yes, he oh, does. <laughs> oh wow! Hey, you know those those people. Like, there's a lot of weirdos in politics uh, in in public office. Let me tell you, Cliff. I mean, 
I, I worked for the government <laughs> at one point. There's a lot well, of freaks. I'm telling you. I'm you know, I, I, I'm i willing to bet that I'm, public defender, that. I'm willing to bet the public defender has never been on a camping trip in his life. <laughs> You know, uh, I don't even know who knows knows if he was even properly potty trained. (laughs) I guarantee he'll never be invited on another one, at least a trip anyway, I'm sure. So, so Cliff, let me ask you, was he staying, the the public defender was sharing a tent with another individual, right? Yeah, everybody has to share a tent with somebody. Did did they share a tent for the rest of the trip after that? I would have thought so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there. what happens is on a canoe trip, you're packing in pairs, basically. See, so all your stuff's in the same canoe. You don't want half of your stuff in somebody else's canoe. If it starts to rain, you want to be able to get to your raincoat. You know, if it gets buggy, you want to get to a head net or bug jacket or whatever. Or you may have a lot of money wrapped up and maybe you got expensive camera, stuff like that. You want that stuff with you. Okay. So that needs to be in the same canoe with your partner. You know, we've been on trips where sometimes you just have to split up people um, because the two of them can't, you know, the two of them can't get along. And I've done that. Um, And there are times that you've been on trips where um, somebody, his skill level is so low, you cannot allow him to paddle with who he's paddling with because he's going to crash and burn. So then you have to split them up. But otherwise, you try. You basically try to work out this partner thing, so you have two com- not two compatible people, but two people that have decent enough skills that they can get get that canoe downriver without crashing and burning. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, so, it's like picking yeah. teammates you don't for dodgeball. Always know. Yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, you don't. You don't always know. I remember. I had this was some years ago. We we d- did a canoe trip. Uh, in uh, Canada, and we were all paddling solo canoes. Now, this was just a first. This was the only trip I ever done where everybody was paddling solo canoe. This was on the mm-hmm. Steel River in Ontario. And I interviewed this one guy, and he, he seemed great. First of all, he was trim. He was powerful. He had two racing canoes. He had oh, another wow. canoe. The guy skied wow. the uh, Berkabiner, which is the you know the the big. Uh, the big ski race in Minnesota every, every year. And he would finish in the top, <coughs> the top 50 or 60 or whatever. So he was a, sk- a cross country skier. He was a canoeist. He was a backpacker. This guy is going to be absolutely great. Sure. Okay. Yes. So Uh-oh. we get on the river. Now I'm go- doing this trip. I'm doing this trip with a guy by the name of Steve Johnson and who Steve uh, works for Paragus Northwoods Company in Ely, Minnesota, occasionally, once in a while, leading trips. Mm-hmm. He's like one of the best guides I, I, I've ever worked with. The guy's phenomenal. He actually lives out in the woods. Um, he, make, he, he, he can do anything. He built, his own, he built his own cabin. He built his own vegetable, uh, you know, uh, uh, house, but below, uh, you know, below ground. Uh, Steve, he's been written up in a number of actually magazines and newspapers. He's a phenomenal paddler. So what's happening is the very first day of the trip, this guy is having trouble. He cannot back ferry a canoe. Now, back ferrying is a maneuver. For those people who don't understand it, you, if, you, if you've ever watched ducks swim across a river to get to the other side, you notice they don't swim straight across. Because if they did, the current would carry them downstream. They point their little bodies on an upstream angle of about 45 degrees. And they paddle their little legs. And their little bodies go exactly straight across Mm -hmm. the river. It's two Mm -hmm. vectors, the speed of the current and the angle. I know how they figured this out. I don't know. But that's called an upstream ferry. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you turn your canoe upstream and you turn it 45 degrees and you paddle on an angle like that, you'll go directly across the river. Hmm. Now, if you turn it downstream and you paddle and you turn the canoe 45 degrees and you paddle backwards, you'll go across the river that way. So when you're in a fast moving river, you have to avoid obstacles. A lot of times that's what you do. You just turn the canoe about 45, 30 to 45 degrees and you paddle backwards. Instead of running into the rock ahead, you go straight across the river. 
It's real important technique. Now I showed people how to do this. I modeled it. Everybody could do it except this guy. He couldn't get it. I mean, we trained him again and again and again, and he couldn't get it and he couldn't get it and he couldn't get it. And he wanted to quit. Now he wants to quit. Well, how are we going to quit? I don't know. I can't go on. I can't go on. I can't go on. So it turns out the way the Steel River is, it makes a corner about halfway through the trip. You're about four days into the trip. It makes a corner and then it goes into a series of another, a series of many series of rapids. And so we're camped right at that turnaround area. And we don't know what to do with this guy. And there's a suddenly there's a Canadian group that, that that's parked on the, that comes in and parks on the other side of the river. Uh, they're probably a little unhappy with us because they probably wanted this campground that we had, which was an excellent campsite. So the guy comes over and we're talking to him. Very nice people. He had a group of, of high school kids or maybe they were college kids. I don't know. They're going down the river too. No, they're going upriver, excuse me. They're going upriver to a town upriver. And this guy, you know, he hears this. He's pleading, can I go with them? Can I go with them? <laughs> and so, so what are you going to do with your canoe? It's a rented canoe. How are you going to get it back from there? From You're up in Ontario. Okay, how are you going to do this? I don't care. I can't go on. I can't go on. Oh, no. Well, to make a long story short, finally, <clears throat> Johnson and I talked to him. And we convince him to follow us down, follow us down river, even though he's crashed and burned a number of times. So Steve, Steve is paddling a homemade solo canoe that he designed himself. Um, it was a nice, I mean, the design wise was well designed boat, but it was as far as the build quality was concerned. Okay. I call it a working boat. It's not a pretty boat, but it's a decent working boat. It's not a beautiful boat. What's its value? Oh, well, this was quite a while ago. Its value would be maybe 200 bucks outside. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so now Steve's a very good paddler. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Steve and I were popping into Eddie's and we're doing this other stuff. And then, it, then it starts. He starts saying, I want to, I, I want to buy your boat, Steve. I want to, I, I want to buy your boat. Uh, how much you want for it? So Steve <laughs> says, 500 bucks. <laughs> so 500 bucks. I mean, this is 20 wow. some years ago. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You got a deal. Now the point is, is this oh guy thought that if he bought Johnson's canoe, he could do everything Johnson can do, which brings <sighs> us to an interesting observation yes. about <laughs> what's going on in the wilderness today. People don't want to learn things. They want to buy things. They yeah. think if they buy a better tent, they won't get wet in the rain. If they <laughs> buy a better canoe or kayak, they won't hit as many rocks. <laughs> they don't want to learn how to paddle. God yeah. forbid they should learn how to paddle. They yeah. don't want to learn camping skills. They don't <laughs> want to learn um, whitewater canoeing skills. <clears throat> they don't want to learn anything. They just want to buy something. And they think what they buy is going to solve their problem. When everybody knows you could take an Olympic paddler, put him in a bathtub with a two by four, and he'd do better than the vast majority of beginners. So anyway, another another example of how you sometimes just don't know because this guy looks so good on paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very cool. He had this expensive camera. Uh, oh no, this this uh, I had this guy had a real expensive camera. He was a little bit like Margaret. He wouldn't listen. Real expensive camera. This was the days of film cameras, and I kept telling him, "You got to put this in a waterproof bag." No, he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't <laughs> listen. And this was this was not a waterproof camera. It was one of these big things with big lenses and stuff. So he came to this one rapid. I modeled it. Everybody makes it through except him and his buddy. Bingo, capsize. Bye bye, camera. That's the end of the camera. The guy owed me 150 bucks still for the trip. And he was so ticked off that his camera was ruined that he just blamed me and never paid me the money he owed me. Oh, wow. 
I don't know. You know, that would have been worth a fist fight right there. <laughs> right, 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 right. It, it is Cliff. It sounds like if anybody was going to get into a fifth fist fight in any of those situations, it would have been you because of how frustrating everything was. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> you. It yeah. seems like you've had some trials and you've been tested, and you have just a world of knowledge and stories to share. And I appreciate the the very few of I'm sure many stories that you have. I, I it's so interesting. And even um, Mustang sixty six said to you are very entertaining i was very entertained throughout the entire thing i can't believe we're already out of time so cliff where can people find you on social media and where can people follow you for just more entertainment and interesting stories and tips oh, well <laughs> well they can just type my name in on any search engine it'll come right up but or they can go to my website which is www.cliffcanoe.com now, I do a blog every month on there. There's actually, I think there's about 90 blogs on there now. And there's some cool blogs on there. And it doesn't cost you a penny. You can sign up for the blogs. And then you'll know when they come out. And you can read them. And, of course, uh, you know, I have a shop. I have, I have books for sale. I have a uh, What's New section. Um, you know, I think you'll find my uh, website kind of entertaining. It, yeah, and, and by the way. By the way, if you, if you contact me, if anybody wants to contact me, go to my website and click contact. Please don't go on my Facebook page and do Messenger. I hate Messenger. I don't do <laughs> Messenger. I can't say it often enough. Read my lips. I don't do Messenger. Okay? Yeah. But if you, you heard it any first. Questions, That's right. Questions, go to the website. Me, and, I, and I'll, I'll get right back to you. I'm happy to answer questions about camping and canoe. I love this story. I have to vouch for, for Cliff. I gotta tell you, Cliff, you are Johnny on the spot when it comes to email. I mean, you're bam, lightning fast. You must have this like stitched to your belt or something. <laughs> like fast. an old school pager. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, you remember I mean, those bam. names? Pagers. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh my God. Well, Cliff, and by the way, if you don't, if you've never read any of Cliff books, um, do pick one. I'm telling you, why, what is it? Canoeing Wild Rivers, my very favorite. That's your flagship book. Amazing, but all of your books are amazing, and you can find those on Cliff's website as well. So, all right. Well, thanks. That's thanks, awesome. buddy. Well, Cliff, we'd like to thank you here for being our guest in the camping show this evening. <laughs> always, and I mean always, a pleasure having yes. you here with us. So you're such an icon. Thank you for that. Yes, thanks Cliff, so, much, so much. Great, great to meet you virtually. Thank you so much for being on the show. I had a blast with you today. Thank you. And we'd thanks like to, to thank all your each of our for tuning in. Pardon? Yes, yes. And thank you to all the listeners for tuning in. It's been a great show. And we'd like to thank our sponsors as well for bringing you tonight's show, Campground Views and Rutabaga Paddle Sports. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode. Meet Emily Jackson of Jackson Kayak with special guest, Emily Jackson. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in to The Camping Show. This is C.W. Getz. And I'm Bianca Cahill. A very raspy Bianca K. Hugh <laughs> <laughs> reminding you to learn more, do more. Good night, everybody. Be safe. See you next week.